morning. It's Wellness Wednesday, and we hope you are well this Wednesday. What a beautiful sunrise wow. this morning. Wow. I Cold, but sunny. Man, it's crunchy out there still this morning. <laughs> like what she calls it crunchy. Yeah, you know what? It's like you walk into the car and I'm like, what the heck? It's scraping. <laughs> yeah, scraping, scraping, I know. I know. It's like, what? But it's going to warm up. It's going to be yes, beautiful. Absolutely. Uh, we want to thank our friends over in Sioux, Michigan. It is quarter to five is the name of the store who's sponsoring our show for the whole month. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. They're on Ashman Street in downtown Sioux St. Marie, Michigan. It's called quarter to five because everything in the store starts at five dollars and by the end of the week is down to a quarter and we're not talking about discount designer stuff we're talking no, about no, brand is, name yeah. top quality stuff it's overstock and they have all these different vendors they get from it's it, it's wild you gotta check it out yeah go see it's fun go see go see go see speaking of michigan yeah, you know what no um i didn't know that people did this um Marking your tire for parking. Yes, they do that here in Sault Ste. Marie. They do. Yes. So, so a person. Because a piece of chalk. Right. Yeah, and they on a handle, and they mark your tire. Is that to see how long you've been there? So if if they come back and you're still there, ticket. then they they ticket you. Okay, I wasn't Luann, quite clear. How on long did you work at CTV? Um, twelve <laughs> years. Okay, you know the parking lot right behind your staff parking lot when you yes. were at CTV. Yeah. There's a little booth. Yes, yes. And that man that sits in that booth. Yes. That that's the guy that has the chalk. He chalks your tires. I have never seen a, talk ch a chalked tire in my whole Why life. Why did you bring this up? Seriously. Because you didn't know this yeah. after? No. Is there a story now? Because apparently a woman, her name is Allison Taylor. She's from Saginaw, Michigan. Hi, Allison. And she said that chalky, chalk marking tires violates the Constitution. And she brought it to court. And courts are saying, yeah, you know what? We're thinking it's against the Constitution. Because it's almost like it's an illegal search. It's almost like... Police using a GPS on your vehicle without you knowing it. So yeah. I would have thought because there's somebody else that's touching your property. Well, the, I'm sure that's part but, of it. But so yeah. They, so that in yeah, have they you ruled? Can't, you can't touch or search a person's property without due cause. So you can't chalk a tire. And okay. I didn't even know about chalking tire, and now it's over. I so miss the boat. No we, can, no, we can still do it in Canada, so you can still complain. Okay, good. Let's take it to the Supreme Court. All right. <laughs> I've never seen. Have you seen like them chalk tires? Yeah, yeah. Yes, in I that have, parking lot. Where have I been? I have never I seen, seen that. I haven't seen that guy lately. No, with the chalk. I think he's like vacated the booth too. I, th I, th I yeah, think so. Yeah, but I don't know. You know what? Because Richard Kim, because his studio and everything yes. is there, he has parking there, and they have to check and see who actually pays to park in that lot too. So they must have a list of license plates or something. I they don't know. must. Yeah. It's it's. And you know what? Mm, what? I find that we've discussed this before. Um, downtown parking in Sault Ste. Marie is a bit of a challenge. I don't agree, but anyway. The um, parking lots get full rather quickly or you have to park and pay and then walk for five or six Boo -boo. blocks. Well, five or six steps. Okay, but still. Um, so yeah, it's interesting for me to, to <laughs> hear about this chalking thing. I don't understand how anybody can say parking in, in downtown Sault Ste. Marie is a challenge when we have so many free to our parking lots located in every single block. You know how they did the blocks one, yes, two, three, four? We yes. don't do that so much anymore. They're everywhere. And meter parking, get, over, your, January, get over yourselves. You know what? But you in January, the parking lots that you can stay in for two hours are a distance away. So if you're an elderly person, okay. you're trying to park in front of the store that you just want to run into. That I agree a, with. There's a snow bank there, and then you got to park your car behind okay. the building, behind the building, and behind the other building. May I speak, Luann? <laughs> You are always speaking, Tim. <laughs> I think that we could probably find a happy medium where why don't we have some parking spaces that are designated for seniors and they could have some kind of a parking pass. I think that would be a awesome. A municipal parking pass that says, I'm a senior, and then you can park in those locations on Queen awesome. Street. And, and people who those can walk can walk. Same as you walk. do for, or, or if, but if you're a senior and you have your mobility issues, then just get a thing. Yeah. But you know what? When I say thing, I mean a, uh, a disabled or what do you call a it? A handicap. Yeah, um, I hate the word handicap though. I know. Anyway, but you know what? Signs. I'm just thinking. You pull into you you on Queen Street. You pull up in, in to the front of a store that you're just going to run into for a second. You can't just run into for a second on Queen Street because a there's no parking. There's three spaces in front of that one store. <laughs> They're always full, and then you have to pay. 
or park 14 miles away. The next time I have Josh Ingram on from the downtown Yeah, let's talk to Josh. I'm going to have you talk to him. I'm going to just sit back and watch. Yeah, let's do that, Josh. I encourage people to go downtown to shop. I think downtown's and lovely, and I think it's a shame that parking's an issue. And I'm not the only one who feels that way because everybody talks about it. Well, then why don't we do something about it? Why don't we? Tim, get on it. <laughs> Happy administration. Let's let's celebrate something today. Happy Administrative Professionals Day. Oh, awesome. You know, started in 1952 as Secretary's Day. Secretary's Day. But of course, the secretaries, uh, that, that's no longer a term we use because uh, they are not just... They team. run the place. They basically. run the place, basically. Yeah. So Administrative yeah. Professionals Day. Thank you, everybody, for all you do in the offices uh, around. Ex executive Assistance Day, it's who's, also known who's as... Who's your executive assistant? Uh, her name is um, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, she Audrey. does wonderful things. She yeah, plays, she Audrey is our, uh, She was an exchange student from St. Mary's College, and she is now employed here. And she started sitting in the room doing sound, and now she's a camera person. Yeah. She's a microphone and sound person. I achieved her this she, lives, she leaves me notes telling me what to say, so I consider Audrey my administrative professional. Well, happy Audrey Day. There you go. And let's it's also Pig it in a Blanket Day. So let's go Pig in a Blanket Day. That'll, I'll be that part. Audrey, I'll take you out. We'll have pigs and blankets. Now, I always thought a pig in a blanket was just a sausage and pastry. Yeah. In the States, they call it sausage wrapped in pancake. Oh. <laughs> really? That's my reaction, in too. pancake? Really? I mean, I could have a sausage and a pancake. I could wrap my own sausage in, in a pancake. I'm not going anywhere But I'm not that. buying I am that. not talking about that at all today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> PEI went conservative. Yeah. Minority. The Green Party didn't make it. Oh, they were so close. Yeah. Boy, they were just so close. They're Minority taking over government. the country, the Conservatives. Yeah, it's a bit scary. <laughs> I don't know, though. Maybe the PEI Conservatives aren't as radical as the Ontario and the, and the wonder, yeah. Alberta And plus, ones. a minority government, in my opinion, is always healthy. a good thing. Because... They gotta be on their then, toes. Yeah, and They've then the government, the you know, you gotta, it's like in the States now. Thank goodness for the, the uh, Senate and Nancy Pelosi, oh. and, right? I hear the construction going on again. Um, it's Luann's having a makeover today, so the sandblaster's outside. <gasps> yeah, it's warming up because it takes a minute. Yeah, I mean, like there's stuff on here that you can't even find anymore. Did, did you hear that Kim Jong Un and Vladimir Putin are meeting in Russia? No. They're having a meeting. Kim Jong-un is scheduled to meet in Russia with Putin, and all I could think of was, it's an advanced planning session. Right, <laughs> to yeah. To see how they're going to hack the 2020 mm -hmm. election. What mm -hmm. can we do this time? And you know what? Donald Trump is jealous because he wasn't invited. Is he? Probably. I yeah, I just figured out how they're going to figure out now for the next yes. election. Yes, now let's do this. Two do communists this. together plotting, and, and I'm sure they're just going to snicker at about the U.S. Oh, yeah, you know what? They must be laughing at the U.S. right now. Yeah. And Canada, for that matter, you know, because any chance that they get for at any fault of any leader that isn't them, they're going to just take advantage of it. Um, hey, you know how we were talking about Britney Spears yesterday? Yeah. She finally came out and Did spoke. she speak publicly? Yeah, she actually okay. she got on Instagram. And she said, you know what, guys? I, I want you all to know that I'm okay. Uh, I have to take a little bit of time for myself. Nobody is holding me. Nobody oh, is... She is, set her fans yes, straight. Yes, she set the fans straight. because there were people they're, protesting outside yeah, her rehab place. Thinking that, you know, she was put there and against her will. And, it was just, and she said... Says, you know what? Leave Britney alone. If you if you don't mind, she said, I'm trying to take care of myself, and privacy is really important at this time. So yeah. if you could if you could do that for me, that would be great. She says, my family has been going through a lot of stress and anxiety lately, so I just needed time to heal. Oh. So let's just give her the time to heal. Yeah. Well. Like I mean, seriously. You know, like you need so much time to, to heal. heal. Oh yes. my word, I can't even begin to heal. <laughs> How much time do you have for me to heal? I have 55 more minutes for you <laughs> to feel well better this before Wednesday. the end of the awesome. day. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So on this Wellness Wednesday, let's see. Oh, there's a, a Ladies Day at Grand Gardens North, and this is in support of St. Basil's Elementary School. Awesome. It's going to be a great event. We've got a couple ladies here talking about uh, putting that event together, how much fun they've had and how great it's going to be. Our second guest this evening was going to be here about the Relay for Life. Of course, that's for the Canadian Cancer Society. This is the morning. What did I say? This evening. <laughs> You're still at Shrek. I'm still at Shrek, which opens tonight, by the way. Um, 
I know. So anyway, uh, my second guest is sick at home and she can't be oh. here. But that's okay. We have a great interview with my friend Maria Perella Elaria from Art Speaks, and we're going to air that again because it's a really cool one. So that and the news coming up on Mornings with Luann and Tim, brought to you this month by a quarter to five downtown Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, on Ashman Street. We'll be right back. Quarter to five, discover all kinds of treasures and never pay more than five dollars. Inventory is restocked every Saturday and you can find anything from electronics to household items, toys, and much, much more. On Saturday, everything is five dollars and the price goes down throughout the week, ending with 25 cents on Friday. We restock weekly with new items from various big box stores, so you never know what treasures you can find. Come visit us at quarter to five, 2510 Ashman Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Hey Mel, did you know in Queensgate, Australia, it's illegal to own a pet rabbit unless you can prove you're a magician? Really? Did you know that if you're at the McMeekin Arena, you're only 9 minutes and 54 seconds away from Maitland Port Lincoln? It's closer than you think. Welcome back, and I am joined in the studio right now by Allie and Linda. Hi, ladies. Good morning. You are involved with the St. Basil's Ladies' Day. Yes, yes. We are. It's a fundraiser for St. Basil's Elementary School. Yes. Now, we were talking, Allie. Um, I had the pleasure of going in to St. Basil's. I was invited in by uh, Principal Lettieri, and uh, we did an, a whole interview, uh, uh, two segments, on the leader in me that they do at St. Basil's. Yes. And I'll tell you, uh, it's quite, it's quite unique in the way that they approach this school. There's 584, did we say, about that, kids Roughly. in that school? Yeah. And you might think that for an elementary school that's huge, but when you get in there, the way that it's, it's almost like it's a community, mm -hmm. yes. and every child looks after every other child. Mm -hmm. And they interact from grade to grade, like I've never seen before, leadership and initiative and rewarding for, for great behavior. Yes. It's a fantastic policy. And they also include the indigenous element yes. in, in their education. Yes. The language is included in the school. You must be very proud to be affiliated with it. It's exciting. It's really exciting to see very it Very proud. Do you, have, yeah. do you have children at the school? I have one. Um, he's in grade six. Yes. Nathan, yes. Yep. He's at the Hi, school. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> and my, what about you? Mine are in JK in grade one. Oh my gosh, so the little starting. itty bitty ones. Yeah. I saw them out at recess. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> my little guy loves seeing himself on your segment. <laughs> <laughs> Did we catch him? Yes, yeah, oh. know. Oh yes, they were snowshoeing outside for their for, for their phys ed class. Yes. Crazy. Recess out there is fun. It is. But I was there in the winter and I didn't realize they don't have school equipment yet, playground they, equipment. They do no, not. They don't. No, we have some things painted on the pavement, but that's really about it. So once those snow banks go, it's not so much fun anymore. They, no, they want no. some uh, real good equipment to play on and yes. safe stuff too, right? That's right. So this is one of the challenges about having a new school mm -hmm. that's been converted from a uh, high school. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't have had anything there then. No, that's right. No. So that's what you're trying to raise money for? Yes, that's what we're where, where do you buy playground equipment from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> yes. They did it at St. Mary's French Immersion too. I remember they did a big did. fundraising thing and they were you had huge success. How's your planning going for this event? It's going really well. It's been very well received. Um, we've had over 1,100 people on Facebook alone say that they're interested in coming. Whoa! So yeah, so I'm expecting a few hundred at least. Mm -hmm. Linda, this is the first annual. 
This is the first annual, yes. Has it been a challenge, to putting an, a, an inaugural event together? No, absolutely not. Actually, we've worked really well together. Is it just the two of you? Um, mm -hmm. Basically, yes. Holy smokes! Yes. So where have you had assistance from? I mean, how did you, where did you get to all, where did your success come from? Well, I've, I have been in, I've been involved in vendor shows um, for a number of years, so just mm -hmm. reaching out to those connections and just letting everyone know, um, hey, we're doing this, it's a new event, this is what we're working towards, um, and just giving the vision early mm -hmm. on that it's some, an interactive event, um, and it's just going to be something a little different than any other vendor show around here. And you're holding it where? Uh, at uh, North Grand Gardens. Grand Gardens North, which yes. is Fourth Line. We all know yes. where that is. Yes. Uh, fourth Line and Great Northern Road, yes. or Highway 17. I call it Great Northern Road still. Mm -hmm. And uh, what day is it? April the April 28th. Oh, that's this, this coming Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, you, can you will, will you actually be able to purchase things there when you're? I mean, the yes. vendors yes. be sell. Yes, the, absolutely. So it's a market as well. Yes, there's 34 vendors. 34. Yes. What kinds of uh, what kinds of services and vendors will we see there? Oh, let's turn yeah. to Al. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to have everything. So we'll have everything from health and wellness, um, food. That's why it's Wellness Wednesday. <laughs> uh, clothing, we have a fashion show at 2 o'clock. We have Fashion show? Yes. Now that's Absolutely. unique for these. Uh, is it one person, one vendor in the fashion show or multiple? No, we have three clothing vendors that are doing the fashion show who will all have vendors, uh, vendor stations at the event. And then we have different accessories. Um, vendors so as well. Vendors that are selling accessories that are contributing to the mm -hmm. fashion show. Yeah, so jewelry, handmade jewelry. Um, so you'll get to bags. see it on stage in the fashion Absolutely. show and then be able to go over to the, uh, go over go the vendor and they purchase, purchase it. it. That's really unusual actually to have a fashion show that, that offers multiple vendors to be showcased. That's, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, they've been great to work with. Everyone's really excited about this. Wow, and Grand Gardens North, how are they to work with? Excellent. Yeah. Yes. That's they're Ken and Lee. Ken and Lee, they're Kurt excellent, Sheffield. yes. Uh, they set up a great Great room Venue, for you. Yeah. 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 Yes. What hours is this running? Twelve to five. Yes. Twelve to five on Sunday. Yes. Okay. Is it? Uh, is there an admission? No it's admission. Free. free. Free to everyone. Get out of here. And men are welcome to come as hey. well. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Ladies, even men are welcome. That's yes. right. It's a Absolutely. great place to shop for your woman. You said interactive. What sort of interactive about the vendors? So the, uh, many of the vendors are going to be interactive with the visitors. So, um, for example, we have a nail station. She's going to be doing nails. Um, the hairstylist will be doing updos. Um, teeth whitening. It's going to actually happen there? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously arts and crafts, clothing, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you also say there's a cash bar? There is a cash bar and there's a special ladies day drink. Oh, a featured cocktail. That's right. So, that's drink. lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, you're hoping, to, you already know how much you've raised because this is you, the money that you're making is coming from? It's from the sale of the tables. Isn't that nice? So those vendors are really supporting you. They yes. are, yes. Now, this is your first time out, so there's some things next year when you re when you have your second annual. Yes. Uh, some things you're going to do a little differently because you're going to have more time. That's mm -hmm. right. So this year we really didn't know what the reception would be. Right. Um, but it seems to be quite good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to build on that momentum. We'll have um, probably the same size of event, mm -hmm. um, but we will have a lottery license by then, so we'll um, be able to do a 50 50 draw, which I think will um, be very enticing. Right. Will it also allow you to do sort of door prizes where you can purchase a ticket to win a door Absolutely. prize? Absolutely. Yes, we have door prizes at this event. You um, do. But yeah, how, do you so win, how do you qualify for a door prize if you didn't pay to get in? So mm -hmm. every woman that walks in the door will receive a passport that has e the logo from each of the vendors on it. So you go to each vendor, get them to sign off on it, gives you a chance to interact with them, and then that becomes your door prize ticket. And at the end of the night, we'll draw all the door prizes. But so. Normally, when you want to get a, a, get win a door prize, you have to pay it. There's no charge Not to even here. get. No. Hey, you can win. No. Do you know yes. what the door prize is yet? I have some of them in my no. office. There's yes. more than one. There are. So yeah. you can. That's. I love this. Okay. It's fantastic. <laughs> we want people to come. We want the vendors to be happy. Yes. Come and shop and spend the day with and us. And what a great way to start off spring. You know, with this kind of weather, you want to yes. get out, do a little Sunday shopping, yeah. right? Absolutely. It is a Sunday, right? It I got is that a right. Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Yes. And. Um, so what else is sort of unique about this one? Do you have any vendors that are coming here that you'd never heard of before? That brought, um, brought well, your attention? There is one in particular. There's a ranch just outside of the city that offers um, therapy horses. Mm -hmm. I so, did not know that. No, I didn't mm -hmm. either until she reached out to me. So I'm really excited about this. Is she going to have a horse there? <laughs> <laughs> Not pony, on Sunday. Pony rides in the parking lot. <laughs> but so she's going to talk about how 
Yeah, um, how, they, how do they interact with horses? Yes. So um, able-bodied people and individuals with disabilities can go to the ranch and interact with the horses, ride them, pet them, and just be there and, and feel the energy and work with the energy. So there's information vendors as well. Information Absolutely. booths as well as yeah. being able to purchase yeah. it. That's great. Okay, so let's r remind everybody once again. So this is first annual Ladies' Day. That's right. Yes. In support of? St. Basil's Catholic Elementary Catholic School. Catholic, and to yes. get them some much needed playground mm -hmm. equipment. Yes. The event is being held at Grand Gardens North. There's the posters up right now. And you yes. can see it on Sunday, April 28th, 12 to 5 p.m. There's a ton of parking up there, so you're yes. laughing in that regard. Yes. So go on out, enjoy this Sunday, do some shopping, and say hi to Linda and Allie up at Grand Gardens North and support St. Basil's Elementary School. Thanks Perfect. for being here. Thank Thanks you for having Great. Us. Good luck with the event. Come back Thank and tell you. us how it went. Yes, absolutely. Anytime you're doing fundraising or anything like that for St. Basil's, you come and see me. Oh, thank and you. we'll be back with Luann right after this. Our mornings with Luann and Tim. to get you, Barbara. Listen to them. Children of the night. Alive! It's alive! phone. What do you use your phone for mostly? Work, play. Oh, you mean everything. One that won't run out of battery when Joyce from Accounting is doing The Running Man. Who else wants to see that Running Man demo? The Samsung Galaxy Note 9. It's a great phone with a powerful all-day battery. We've got the best phone for you for a great price. And you can choose your carrier. A little Running Man? Just a little. There. Nice. I hope no one saw that. Ooh. Where was she when I went phone shopping? Have a great business idea but don't know where to start? Need help taking your business to the next level? C2C Business Services can be your guide in navigating the path of entrepreneurship with services ranging from grant funding support, access to service experts, market information, and helping your business adopt new technologies to create and foster a culture of innovation for ongoing success. Call C2C Business Services and let them be your first step in taking your entrepreneurial dreams from concept to commerce. C2C Business Services is a division of the Sault Ste. Marie Innovation Center. We actually have some breaking news for you out of Toronto regarding a Sault Ste. Marie man. Um, he is 43-year-old Keith Bradmore, and he's from the Sioux, and he's facing numerous charges related to an alleged incident in the area of Young and Girard on March 14th, so very recently. So police are saying that Bradmore sexually assaulted an 18-year-old man, threatened him with a weapon, and held him against his will for 48 hours. They are also charging him uh, with giving him a noxious substance that knocked him unconscious. Um, he faces, obviously, several charges with regards to that. Also, this is important, police are saying that he is armed and considered dangerous. So if he happens to come home to Sault Ste. Marie, if you happen to see him, 911 is what you need to do. He is a white man, slim build, about 5 feet 6 inches, and he weighs 170 pounds. He has brown eyes and short, dark hair. So breaking news here in Sault Ste. Marie, and unfortunately, it's not good. There's some news in the Jussie Smollett case as well. Ah! Um, he, the, his, the two gentlemen, the Osandero uh, brothers, yes. <clears throat> that he knew from the show Empire, mm -hmm. 
um, that he allegedly hired to, to... And they were trainers as well, his Personal trainers. trainer, yeah. I believe, yeah. yes. So um, they have hired a lawyer, and they are suing Jesse Smollett, Smollett's lawyer. Oh. With defamation. Not Jesse Smollett, no, his lawyer. No, the lawyer, because the lawyer publicly stated that they were responsible for the crime. Oh. He, and they said, so they're... Um, Mr. Smollett originated, planned, and orchestrated the attack, so they're saying that they've been falsely accused by his lawyer, which has caused them harm to their reputations no and doubt. their careers, and they're in potential to earn money. Uh, they also, I didn't know this part of the story. Apparently, the lawyer publicly announced that, um, I believe his name is An Abimola, Abimola Os Osandaro, mm -hmm. that they had a sexual relationship. Jesse Smollett ah. and one of the two gentlemen, one of the oh, two brothers. Oh, I didn't know that either. No. And he is a Nigerian-American. And what they're saying is he travels home to Nigeria quite regularly. He was born in Chicago, mm -hmm. but he has family in Nigeria. And we know that they were going to Nigeria. The brothers were going to Nigeria just after the attack. Right. In Nigeria, homosexuality is still illegal. Ah. And it's punishable by up to 14 years in jail. Oh, my word. So what the lawyers are saying, what the brother's lawyer is saying is that by coming out publicly and announcing that this one gentleman had had sexual relations with Jesse Smollett. He put him in danger. He's going to put him in danger for when he returns to Nigeria. Wow. So on several levels, they're being, the lawyer, Jesse Smollett's lawyer, is being accused of defamation and other things. And so this is going to lead to... Um, uh, uh, when you have to, what is that called? When, uh, when you go in and you have to talk to the lawyers. Uh, there's going to be, uh, before the trial, when they go in and you have to... Discovery? Yeah, yeah, like that. But in a civil suit, you have to go in. Like they just did it with that guy, Alex, from, from InfoWars. He, deposition. Deposition. They're going to be deposed. Oh. Or the lawyer's going to be deposed. Well, you know what? I remember during the whole incident, some pundits were, like, immediately after the Smollett lawyer spoke, said he was very strong in pretty much ac accusing these two gentlemen of setting it up. And they were surprised mm -hmm. because as a legal person, you would think that you need to be a little bit more careful. So it's interesting that, you know, it comes to fruition in the long run. Yep. Mm. So now, as I mentioned earlier, um, we were going to have a guest on the show from the Canadian Cancer Society's Relay for Life, which is coming up in July. June, July. June? Yeah. We'll have to figure. We're going to be there again. Yes. Uh, and we're going to be doing a lot of features about the Relay for Life uh, over the Looking coming Looking forward month. to it. But she couldn't be here today. So coming up, please stay tuned for a great interview with my. Oh no, the news is next. The Luan. news is next. And then my interview with with uh, Maria Perella Alaria. But anyway, so much to look forward to. I know. There's. I can't even. Keep it all straight. <laughs> we'll be back after this short commercial break. See you in a minute. Sault Ste. Marie locations. You do life, we do taxes.
City police regularly receive complaints about drivers not properly stopping for school buses. Officials want to remind you of the rules, including school bus upper red lights flashing means drivers in both directions have to stop. Stop at a safe distance, that's about 20 meters from the bus, and don't move forward until the red lights have stopped flashing or the bus starts to move. Penalties are stiff. A first offense carries a minimum fine of $490 and six demerit points. Multiple violations can result in fines as high as $4,000, six demerit points, and possible jail time. Vehicle owners can be charged if their vehicle illegally passes a stopped school bus, even if they weren't driving. Parents are also encouraged to discuss bus safety with their children. Many residents of Quebec's Ile Mercier say they're staying in their homes, even as the only bridge linking them to the mainland has closed due to rising waters. The residents of the Montreal area island say they're equipped with boats, pumps and generators and are pulling together to help each other during the floods. The bridge is closed for pedestrian and all type of vehicle. Only a loader can pass um, goods and material that's needed inside. So now we'll have to install dock uh, with boats to uh, transport people every day uh, to go do their things and come back at night. So we're in uh, figuring out uh, how many kid docks and uh, boats we need right now, but it's still uh, uh, functioning with the uh, liver there and uh, other boats are already started. Canada's no-fly list faces constitutional challenges from two B.C. men, and they argue that the secret roster violates their Charter of Rights guarantee of fundamental justice. The 12-year-old no-fly regime allows the federal government to bar someone from boarding an airplane because there are grounds to believe he or she would threaten the flight or travel to commit a terrorist attack. Under the system, air carriers must inform Transport Canada when a would-be passenger name matches that of a listed person. If the match is confirmed, the public safety minister can direct the airline to do additional screening or prevent the person from flying. The names of listed people generally do not become public unless they take their cases to the courts. The government has repeatedly refused even to confirm the number of people on the list. Parvkar Singh Dule says he received a denial of boarding notification under the no-fly program program last May at the Vancouver International Airport. He took steps to appeal the decision the next month and in August federal officials gave him an unclassified summary of information. Dule was told the Public Safety Minister's office would consider additional classified information in the appeal. Dule received a letter in late January saying his name would remain on the no-fly list. He's asking the court for an order striking him from the roster or at the very least, further examination of his case. Dule also seeks a declaration that the no-fly provisions violate his constitutional guarantee of freedom to enter, leave, and travel within Canada, as well as his charter right to know the case against him and the right to answer that case. Federal lawyers have not yet filed a response, and a spokesperson for Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale declined to comment while the matter is before the court. The Royal Canadian Mint unveiled a commemorative loony meant to mark what it calls a key milestone for lesbian, gay, transgender, queer and two-spirited people. The agency says the new $1 coin pays tribute to Parliament's passing of legislation that initiated the decriminalization of homosexuality in Canada. At a nearby event, historians and protesters discussed their objections to the coin. The laws were repealed in 1969. I think that's a common misconception. Everyone thinks homosexuality was taken out of the criminal code. That never happened. Nothing was repealed in 1969. Instead, they added a reform. They allowed us to commit these crimes, provided we did so under strict circumstances. Basically, this followed on the principle of Pierre Trudeau's statement, there's no place for the state in the bedrooms of the nation. But this merely recognized the obvious. The state didn't have the resources to police the bedrooms of the nation, and this is not how we were criminalized. 
U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says impeachment is one of the most divisive paths that we can go down. Speaking at the Time 100 Summit in New York, the Democratic leader says it remains to be seen what the rest of the Mueller report says. It's to be seen when we see uh, the rest of the report. Now, the administration has said we'll take a few of you in the room, some leaders and committee uh, chairs, just a few, uh, so that we can convey some less redacted version uh, to you. And we said, no, we're not taking any redaction bath here by reading it in a room with a few of us and then preventing us from having any conversation with other people. The American people deserve the truth. We want them to see what the report says. And we're not falling for some, well, for you leaders, we'll show you. But you can't discuss it with anyone else. Recently, the Government of Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. When you support The Restore, it helps Habitat for Humanity build affordable housing for families. How does this work? New and gently used goods are donated to The Restore. The sale of these goods generate funds for building homes. For every $1 spent at The Restore, there is a $4 return on investment within our community. For example, Habitat homeowners have better educational outlook, increased employment stability, improved health, and reduction in the use of social services. Every donation and every dollar we receive through the Restore helps build sustainable housing for future homeowners. Everyone needs a foundation to build a future. To find out more and how you can help, drop by the Restore at 32 White Oak Drive or go to habitatsu.ca. As a nation, Canada has participated in all of the major world conflicts. In the Sioux area alone, over 10,000 men and women have enlisted in the Canadian Armed Forces. The Veterans Commemorative Monument aims to cement the legacy of the Canadian Armed Forces in stone. It will highlight the bravery, strength, courage and sacrifice of our service men and women. In times of need, they volunteered to serve us. Now it is our time to thank and recognize their sacrifice. You can help honor our men and women of service by donating today. To help construct this special, one-of-a-kind monument, visit thosewhoserve.ca to find out how to donate and more.
funny. Tim and I were just looking at that shot. And we were like, oh, water, flowing water, not frozen ice. <laughs> nice to see. Uh, absolutely. Hey, you know what? Yeah. I love Jennifer Garner. Yes. I think I've, I've said that You before. have mentioned that before. I think she is awesome. The older she gets, the more awesome she is. She's stunning. She's beautiful. She's funny. She's down to earth. She's, she's just mom. like me. Just like Tim. Well, she is the cover of People's 2019 Beautiful Issue. Uh, I'm so excited. Look at her. Like, she's so, like, natural and normal and married. <laughs> she was married to a loser. But, you know, like, she's, she's doing well for herself. And she says that... Um, she says it's funny she talked about makeup because she said you know i don't i'm not a big makeup person she, isn't. she says i own the best brushes and contouring things is what she said she said if i use it though i just look like i'm bruised <laughs> <laughs> That's I know what I that mean. feeling. Right? Yeah. But that's what I mean. So like, you don't know how to blend so properly. Yeah. It all just goes gray. Yeah, you just like do this and it's <laughs> like it, you've got bones sticking out of your face and stuff. So I thought that was adorable that she said that. She is. You know. She's in a movie, 13 going on 30. Oh, really? When the mom and the daughter. Well, switch, yeah. How many remakes of that have we I gone through over the years? I think this is the, the third years? one. Could somebody please write an original script in Hollywood? Um, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No. No. Neither have I. And I'm not going. Me neither. There are four people who died at the Grand Canyon within the last four weeks. One a week? I'm telling you. Those on March the 26th, a Japanese tourist was found dead on a trail. Okay, so he didn't fall in or anything, but he still died. March 28th, a man taking a photo stumbled and fell and died. <gasps> on April the 3rd, a 67-year-old California man died. And another person just fell into the Grand Canyon. She was a 70-year-old woman. Look at that picture. What? Yeah, why, why are people doing that? I, I don't know. All I could say is... There's stay, a fence there, people, stay for a back. reason. I mean... Is your selfie that important? It's, it's, it's in the name. Grand Canyon. Canyon. Yes. You want to stay away from the edge. Yeah. And so then officials have said that, well, <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty nonchalant. About 12 people a year die here. <laughs> About. About. Sometimes it's 11 and a half. It's like, it depends <laughs> which way the wind blows. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, safe. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to the Grand Canyon. No, I'm I'll not just going either. Send me a postcard. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> um, Martha Stewart, you know, she's. Did she ever bounce back from being man, in jail and being a right? bad lady? If who's anybody was going to do it, it is going to be Martha Stewart. She was asked recently, she was at the um, Time 100 Gala. Yes. And she was asked on the carpet, you know, how she feels about. People like Lori Laughlin and you know other people, Felicity they're asking Huffman. Martha? Yeah, they're asking Martha that. Who was and like involved said, in insider trading? Yes, who spent five months in jail. Mm -hmm. and, what did um, she say? and she said, you know what? It's it's a sad thing. She said it's really tough for the family. And she said, I feel bad for them. <laughs> I feel bad for those multimillionaires. Who paid half a million dollars so that kid could get in on a free scholarship that didn't exist. Exactly. I, you know? Okay, I'm going to ask a question. And this is one that may not be really, uh, I don't know. Okay, so I don't, I'm a guy. Yeah. I don't know a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. Was there, there's, I read a, head, a tweet that said, Dr. Jen Gunter wants to put an end to the garlic myth when it comes to treating yeast infections. Had you ever heard that, Luann? No. That if you take garlic... You could get rid of a yeast infection. Do you eat it or I don't think stuff that it. was the idea. Stop it. What? <laughs> Ew. Seriously? That was a, a myth. What? I apparently don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> well, like, are you a moron? Don't put garlic there. Seriously. What do you think? It's a I salad? I thought it was a really weird headline to read. That's weird. Tell me about it. It's good for arthritis, so. There you go. And yeah. it's also great in a Caesar salad. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> eating is good. The other is not. We'll be back with garlic with my interview with uh, uh, Art Art Speak. It's a really cool initiative. You'll enjoy this. Stay with us. <laughs>
Every day, I walk for her. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well. If that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes. You realized them. I'm sitting with my friend, and truly my friend, Maria Perella Ilaria. Maria and I, years ago, went to Sacred Heart School together, yeah. and I think we're most famous for our joint geography project. I believe you did the cover page for it. Do you remember that? What did we do? What I don't know. It was a geography thing, and, we had, and I was so happy to have you as my partner because we had to draw a map or something, and you were a genius artist, as you still are. Maria, oh, you're... Okay, your art... Therapist, no. What's your title? Tell me your real title. Oh, okay. Well, What's your real title? My real title? Yeah. Um, I'm just a person. Oh, she's a real person. I'm a real person. I, no, um, I am an art psychotherapist. Oh, that's as what well it is. as a visual artist and a community artist. Mm -hmm. Now, where we are right now, we're in the museum. Mm -hmm. I love this building. It's a wonderful place. It really is. It Have is. you encountered any any strange goings on? No. no okay. It's not. It's not, not haunted, haunted or anything. No. Not that haunted. And if it is, they're all happy. So look at this. This is an amazing <laughs> studio space. Tons of windows. Huge high ceilings. Yeah. There's dinosaurs hanging above us. Yes. And this is where you run Art Speaks Art Hives. Yes. This is where the Art Hives will, will be launched. Tell yes. us a little bit about the history of Art Hives because they're okay. a thing. They've been around before, before they, they were have. here. They have. Yes. So Art Hive is a, a, a term that has been coined by uh, a Concordia University professor. You went there? I went to, Con to Concordia. I received That's my master's in art therapy from Concordia University. Good for you. And so my alumna is, uh, has started the International Art Hive Network. Okay. And so there is a coordinator who runs that. And there is this professor who used to work in the States and she started running small community art studios and started referring to them as hives. And as time has progressed, um, the idea has, has caught on and there's like 155 art hives around the world now. Whoa. And basically they're community art studios um, where access is free. That's, that's the main thing is that you come and it's not about having to buy supplies or about having to pay for the service. You come and it's free. You come, you participate. I look around, I see the supplies. I, well, I mean, look, we've got these. Guys. I see yeah. beads everywhere. I see feathers. I see, oh my oh, yeah. God. Oh, well, knitting stuff to do. Yes, what yeah. That? People, so we have yarns. Yarns, yarns that were donated by um, people in the community as well as the Weavers Guild. who are also housed here in the museum. Um, yeah, and we have so all the supplies are here. Oh, they are. Yeah, we have flowers that my mother used to have in the house. We have paints. Do you uh, when people? So, what kind of what's what's your client base? What's your client base? What who do you well, it's, who well, do you like to have come or? Well, it, it, first let's say it's funded. Best. It's funded by the art hive. Is funded by the museum itself as well as Brenton House, which is a, a, a residential recovery home for ladies. They, they contribute money? Yes, they contribute in order to have the sessions. Wow. And Sioux Area Hospital's Sexual Assault Care Center also had some extra funds, so they were able to help fund us for the year, basically. I'm so, saying that these funding groups, it sounds to me like a lot of trauma is involved with these. It, well, the focus... Is it a lot of trauma-based uh, yeah. therapy you're doing here? Ah, yeah. yeah. Correction. Okay. You do not run counseling sessions. Right. 
This is not not in in my head. (laughs) No, because I said therapy. But it is therapy. It's just not a counseling. Not an official. No, this is not counseling. Yes. Okay. So this is art as therapy. Art as therapy. Which is what art has always been, basically. So tell me a little bit about art and trauma and the correlation between the two and how art can help somebody who's been traumatized, whether it's through a sexual assault, whether it's through a death in the family, some sort of loss, career. Yep. Changing career. How how can can this help us? So the the thing with trauma is that it's it's a full body experience. Right? No matter what happens to you, you end up absorbing it and feeling it and it lives within us, right? And the more we talk about the issue, the more we talk about what happened, we end up kind of re-traumatizing ourselves because intellectually we keep reliving it, but physically all the sensations, the sights, the smells, the sounds are all still trapped in our bodies. So what happens is, is if you use art as a way to help release some of those sensations, right? So um, you, especially in a group with other people, uh, you're able to talk about various things, but you're also able to sort of pick up cues from other people about what kind of materials to use, what kind of colors to use, and you might have a story that emerges from what you're working on, and that story is visual, so each of you can sort of relate to each other in terms of your visual story, and if you need to talk, you can, but often it's more, it's more of a visual, uh, a visual mapping of what's been going on inside of you, and it's a way to help sort of contain um, what is sort of flying around inside your, bra- inside your brain, and it helps you to um, sort of make sense. It helps you to make um, micro decisions. It helps micro you decisions because helps a lot of the time when you're traumatized, you, you lose the ability to even like plan or think yeah. or. And I've heard you, that you, you get sort of you get sort of paralyzed sometimes, right? Like you you just don't know what to do. Should I go in? Should I stay out? Should I do this? Should I do that? that so for someone to have to suddenly so, decide, okay, so I'm going to make a necklace with these beads, yeah, and I need to have a pattern and yeah. colors and yeah, and so you have to figure out so how long is it going to be? What kind of materials will I use? Where Micro will decisions. I start? Am I going to have a pendant in the middle? Am I going to have <laughs> colors that go out in a certain pattern? Am I going to count? You know, all this kind of stuff. So these are. It might sound like really trivial, but but to someone who's completely stuck, it it, it really does help them kind of loosen up and kind of make and then to realize sense of also in a situation when it is art that there really are no wrong choices. Which, yeah, which well, I mean case. it does free you up so that you can actually make a choice and go well that yeah. did, that that wasn't awful. Well, and that's what's that's what's kind of nice as as an art as therapy uh, session as opposed to an art education. Uh, come learn how to paint, right? Kind of thing, because then you've got some you specific skills that right. you can learn. So it's very low pressure, too, right? Yes, very low. Pressure. And a lot of the time, I was asking conversation. Got to be a social thing. It, that's that's the key thing about an art hive, too, is that it is very social. So yeah. I'm sure conversations must come up around the table when people are chatting and stuff. Do people oh, share sure. stories? Oh, very much so. Very much so. Like at. at because much of what we're doing here at the Art Hive, I also do up at the prison. And it's very, I mean, it's very similar. Like, people people need to and want to share their experiences with each other. Ooh, I just and found I, black by accident. It's it really dramatic. It's dramatic. And and that's just it. A lot of people don't realize that that sharing your story helps you build compassion for each other, but also compassion for yourself. When do we come to the Art Speaks Art Hives at the museum? Art Speaks Art Hives at the museum starts... Wednesday, January 30th at 5.30 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. And then we'll be every second Wednesday after that. Do you just come in the front door? You actually, you're going to park at the back and you're going to use the buzzer at the back door. Oh yeah, there's a buzzer right behind the, in the laneway by CTV. Come yeah. in there and there's a buzzer on that side. That's come in that, way. that way you don't pay, you don't pay to come into the museum. Okay. And, it's nice um, that the museum gives you the space. Well, like. this, this is why they're a partner. Yeah. yeah. They, they have been very generous to us and to us and they very much are interested in creating a cultural hub. And so this is, this is our way of helping. So you're starting that. on? We're starting on Wednesday, January 30th. And then every? Every second Wednesday from there on till end of June. And we have a couple of Sundays thrown in. So check, check our website at the art, artspeaksproject.org. Artspeaksproject.org. Art so you can check us out there for um, um, a schedule. Okay. And we're also, I'm posting on Facebook. I'm also posting on Instagram. So the Art Speaks Project. I believe I also found you on Sue Online's community oh. calendar. I think oh, Trina has you posted. Thank you, Trina. She's amazing. <laughs> she I know. That's okay. great. So, and so generally, you say age range women from teenagers oh. right up to like into their Well, actually, on the, yeah, on the Wednesday. On the Wednesday. We're offering uh, adults, so women and men, and youth. Oh, it's so... 
I didn't realize you. I yeah. thought it was just really for, I, I, for well, women. Well, because the Art Speaks project when we started, oh, the Art Speaks was for was women. was specifically for women who were experiencing trauma, this is addictions, and archives are for things. everyone. But archives are for everyone, and we are just limiting it on Wednesday night to adults and youth sixteen and plus, just to keep it a bit more homogenous in terms of experience and age. But Sundays, and Sundays when we have our couple of Sundays, one in February and one in May, I think, uh, will be family archive. So okay. we'll open it up to um, yeah, whoever wants to come with their, their kids. And come and experience the yeah. wonder that is Maria Perella Alaria. <laughs> no, you know what? Seriously, I've just enjoyed We chatted for a good 20 minutes before we oh, yeah. went to air. It was yeah. great catching up with you. Very good catching up with you, too. You do, you've always done really wonderful and exciting and interesting things in the community. And Thank this you. particular project is very dear to my heart. Just because I, I understand what this, how this can really help open up people, free people, and about the bond and the connection that art can bring people together. Mm -hmm. That it is, it is a really healing thing. It is. It is. And it you're is a very nurturing person just oh, by nature. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you're a sweetheart. So, if you want to get to know this, I just spit <laughs> on your work. It's okay. It's oh, and I do have a colleague who's helping me out. Who? Lisa Machino, who you interviewed. Did I? No, Luann interviewed. interviewed Did Luann interview? Well, I'm yes. going to get her on the show too now because yeah, it's good enough for Luann. It's good, good enough for me. Okay. We'll come uh, back then. Check out, <laughs> check out Maria and what she's doing down here at the museum. Check out the museum too. I yeah. mean, if you haven't been in the museum in Sault Ste. Marie, it, it's, it's a fact. It's wonderful. It it's really is wonderful. Yeah. There's a bunch of dead owls outside your door. Dead owls, yeah, yeah. in the Discovery Gallery. You can go take a look. <laughs> They're pretty wonderful. They're nicely, nicely taxidermed. Thanks for hosting us today, Maria. No problem. Thank you for coming. A pleasure. Okay, so we'll be back with more mornings with Luann and Tim after this. Don't go anywhere. In the beginning, there was nature, the oceans, the forests, the mountains, and so history was passed on and memories took shape, defining us, uniting us, creating a legacy that's ours to preserve and ours to celebrate. A message from the Government of Canada. I hope you enjoyed Wellness Wednesday today. Um, well, uh, there's so many different ways you can get therapy oh, now. My Art gosh. therapy, horse therapy, dog therapy, oak oh, yoga. There you go. <laughs> Sure. It's awesome. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Okay. Um, thank you very much to Quarter to Five, Ashman Street, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, for sponsoring us. And break a leg tonight, my friend. The opening night of Shrek. You can still get tickets. Just show up at the door. Showtime's at 7.30 at the Sioux Community Theatre Centre, attached to White Pines Collegiate and Vocational School. You will not be disappointed in the show runs tonight. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday matinee at 2 o'clock. Thank you so much, Mr. Director. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.